coming at you with this week's vlog. And let's start with Respect, a biopic about the life of Aretha Franklin. I want to sing what I want to sing. Okay. You really like it? We love it. Re, 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 re. I got a single by this new chick named Aretha Franklin. You're not about to mess this up for me. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Aretha Franklin. Now, if you think you've seen this film before, then you probably have. And not just because the trailer very effectively delivers every single narrative beat. It's because the music biopic has stuck to such a rigid narrative template over the years that it's as if the producers of every new one are quite aware of the genre's spoofability and simply decide to reabsorb the cliches, reinforcing and clarifying them as a proven formula for success. Jennifer Hudson does her best with the role of Aretha Franklin as she battles against the racism and sexism of the music business and arrives at her masterpiece, a radically new version of Otis Redding's song, Respect, reinvented as an anthem of liberation. But this is a bland impersonation and there's quite a bit of hammy and dull acting. But Hudson isn't especially well served by the script. Scene follows scene with a dull thud. These transitions would maybe work better on the Broadway stage. And the film does not really engage with Aretha's complex and enigmatic relationship with her father, played here by Forrest Whitaker. Here's a film I first saw at last year's London Film Festival, and it's very good to see its UK release now. It's Herself, directed by Phyllida Lloyd and co-written by and starring the Irish stage and screen actor Claire Dunn. I have designed a house that costs just €35,000 to build. Sandra, why didn't you ask me? Your mother was far more than a cleaner to me. She was a friend. It's land going to waste. Use it. Build a house for you and your girls. All along the highway, there's a tiny <laughs> Our own house. At the bottom of the garden. Like a fairy house. <laughs> <laughs> Need a hand for a few weekends over the summer if you'd want to help. Herself is a very likeable and unexpected film which occupies an unusual Venn diagram overlap between heart warmer and social realist drama. Phyllida Lloyd, known for mainstream pictures like Mamma Mia and The Iron Lady, adroitly handles both the C major chords of emotional uplift and the more wrenching moments of tension and pain. Dunn plays Sandra, a single woman who has had to run away with the children from her violent and abusive partner and is now facing a life of semi-homelessness, being housed in temporary hotel accommodation. But then she has an epiphany. She can build her own house using a hired builder working from templates being advertised on the web if the authorities will lend her the capital and rent her the resulting building, a cheaper and more imaginative solution than endless hotel bills for the taxpayer. So many social realist pictures are criticised as being loyal to misery, loyal to despair, but this one has a fascinating can-do ethos. The plot is a bit convenient here and there, but the warmth and good nature of this film carry it along. This next film is forthright and more than faintly melodramatic. If it were a bit longer and more costly, it might almost count as a kind of David Lean epic, but it's about two thirds of that scale, a mid-level Zhivago or English patient. It's Wife of a Spy by the Japanese filmmaker Kiyoshi Kurosawa. <laughs> Kiyoshi Kurosawa, no relation incidentally to Akira Kurosawa, is working with co-writer Ryu Hamaguchi, a very talented director in his own right, to create this wartime mystery thriller with big performances and plot twists, Double Cross and Triple Cross. Yu Oi plays Satoko, a movie actress in 1940 Japan who is married to Yusako, played by Isi Takahashi, a businessman whose liberal views and commercial contacts with foreigners make him an object of suspicion in Japan's nationalist and extremist climate. 
the couple's old school friend Tajid visits them in his new police uniform and they realise he has become infected with this new fascist disease. And Yusuko has made a terrible discovery of Japanese war crimes in occupied Manchuria and he plans to get the proof of this out to the international community, making him a spy and Satoko the wife of a spy. But where do her loyalties lie? It's a bit complicated here and there, but there is such sweep and confidence in this film and a terrific final coda section set in the firestorm of 1945. That's it. I should say again that on Friday the 24th of September at 6.30pm I shall be at the Hastings Literary Festival talking about adaptations and in particular the classic movie by Eleanor and Frank Perry, The Swimmer starring Burt Lancaster, based on the John Cheever short story, and this film will be screened after my talk. I shall also, as it happens, be signing copies of my book, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. So if you can't make it to Hastings, then will you kindly log on to one of the many book retail sites and buy it online? So please give this vlog a like and a share on social media, and of course, subscribe and leave a comment to say that you've subscribed. Until next week.